In this video, I'm trimming another Tennessee Walker broodmare. And she is also getting kind of close to her foaling date. So trying to get her feet done one last time before baby arrives. And right now I'm taking down the wall. I'm using my nippers to do so. I'll use my nippers to remove the bulk of material if there's a lot of wall to, to remove all at once. Is he stuck? And sometimes I can get it off in one piece and <laughs> sometimes that I can't. But it always feels very satisfying if I can get it off in one. Now I've grabbed my rasp. I'm going to even out that roller plane of hoof wall. Make it smooth, remove any rough edges that the nippers might have left while also balancing that hoof with its medial lateral balance. You can see on this hoof that her wall is slightly flared on the lateral side, which is the outside of the hoof wall. Right now I'm just checking her heels, making sure there aren't any sharp edges back there so that when she lands, um, she lands on a flat smooth surface when she puts that foot down on the ground. Now I'm kind of investigating her frog. You can see there's quite a few flaps. It's been wet here for like five months now. So no matter how good your nutrition is, no matter how good your care is, when it's been wet for that long, certain structures of the hoof sometimes will just start to disintegrate. And one of those structures is the frog. So you'll see on this one that I'm trying to remove any little flaps that are present. But this horse's hooves are very deep, and that frog is not super deep. So I'm very close to live tissue, and I would like to take just one big swipe to remove all that material that could become necrotic. But I really don't want to do that and risk cutting into some live tissue. So I'm very gingerly just trying to remove the little bits and pieces that I can, and then call it good. And this horse is a little bit different though. Like she has, she has good sole depth and she has good depth of foot, which means she has a lot of concavity and it's kind of a bowl shape through the sole. So her bars do not migrate forward very much. They kind of stay back where they're supposed to. So I didn't have to take much material from that area. Now just touching up, checking the balance again, just doing any little tweaks that I think I need to do to bring that hoof back where I want it. You can see I'm taking a little bit more off the lateral side because that side was a bit flared out. The lateral side of the hoof wall, that is. So just really trying to even it up and make both sides as even as I possibly can while creating a smooth bevel. Now I'm checking my work to see what I think, checking the heel height. Looks like that lateral heel was still a little bit long, so I took it down a little more. Now I've brought that hoof forward on the stand, and I'm just finishing my bevel from the top side. You can see this hoof does not have a lot of flaring or dishing, so I'm really just concentrating on my bevel. Maybe a little bit more on that lateral side because that's where it was flaring a tiny bit. But this horse has, has really nice hooves, so there's not much to correct beyond removing excess material and creating a nice round bevel that is nice and smooth. And that's it for that hoof. Now I'm working on this horse's right hind. Pulled it back behind her on the stand first. And that's something that's always kind of difficult for brood mares because as they get late in their terms, the weight of that belly starts to really pull down on their back a lot. And when I bring the hoof back in this position, it can be a little bit difficult for them because it makes them hollow out their backs even more. So just try to be mindful of that when trimming hind feet. This mare did not really have a problem with it, but if she rips her foot away during the trimming process, that's usually why. So on this foot, I'm getting a really good nipper run, which is oh so satisfying for me. Look, there it is. Wall removed intact in one whole piece. Super duper satisfying. Now I'm addressing the frog, and what we kind of see on this horse's hinds is that her frog was in the process of shedding on its own, and it kind of looks like a frog sitting on top of a frog, like there's two layers of frog. So what I'm doing with my knife is just trying to remove the top one, and you can see that this frog on this foot 
is kind of laying over into that medial collateral groove. So I'm trying to open that up a little bit. Like I've removed all the tissue that I've wanted to remove that could become necrotic if it stayed on that area. But I just want the grooves open up a little bit more. Otherwise that frog is going to trap a lot more debris in there. And you can see I'm cleaning it out to kind of gauge the depth a little bit better and see how much further down it goes and see if I need to take any more frog. But looks like that's pretty good. So decided to move on to adjusting the wall with my rasp and smoothing down any marks that I left behind with my nippers and really balancing that hoof. You can see that once I did rasp a little bit, the, the thickness of that toe was much greater than it was um, before I rasped. So I'm going to remove some of that excess material so that the toe's not so long and it will also ease the break over on that hind foot. And then that medial side is a bit longer than that lateral side. Super common for horses to grow higher on the medial and then flare on the lateral. So I'm just adjusting those areas accordingly. But what I'll normally do too is address that lateral, that lateral side a bit more when I pull this hoof forward. So almost got the balance sorted. Just want to make sure I give this mare a really good trim because when they foal, sometimes they get kind of protective of their babies and they really won't want them to be handled, either themselves or the foals. So just in case, we like to trim all this gal's brood mares not too long before their foaling dates. Just cleaned out the cat's ears and uh, wanted to make sure my heel height was good and I wanted them to be about an eighth to a quarter inch above that area where the cat's ear is. So this is one of those moments. She had a broodmare moment where she was like, hey, my back is sore. I would like my foot back, please. So I just wanted to do a few more little touch-ups, and then I'll give it back to her and address it from the top where she'll be more comfortable. So now with this hoof forward on the stand, I'm really just going to finish my bevel. There's not too much distortion to correct really at all. You can see how the hoof walls are really quite straight. Um, there's not much flaring, not much dishing. There was a little bit of flaring on the lateral side, but I think I got most of that from the bottom. So just finishing on my bevel, making those areas smooth, and then I'll move on to trimming the next hoof. The further we move on from all those yesterdays, happiness gets nearer. The light that we see closing in so fast ahead, it's hope, it's getting clearer. The more I think of all the tough times we survived, the more it makes me smile. If nothing's broken us, yeah, nothing ever will. Cause dreams are hard to kill. working on this horse's left front and cleaned it out fairly well with the pick on the back of my knife and I'm addressing the frog first because the height of that frog will also help dictate where I bring my heels back to. So I wanted to get that structure dialed in first. Taking down those bars a little bit but this hoof is relatively healthy as well. has a nice concave shape to it which from this view you can sort of see that the sole out to the wall is just a nice bowl shape. 
I'm just kind of removing any any of that tissue I think needs to come off because you could see I found a pocket underneath the top layer of that frog. So I wanted to investigate a little bit further and open up those grooves a little bit more. Um, but it, it, the, the necrosis didn't travel far, so I left the rest of it alone. Now I'm going to remove all that extra hoof wall height with my nippers. And there's a lot of nice healthy hoof wall. So even when there's a lot to remove like there is on this horse, it's so nice to reveal a beautiful hoof underneath with that healthy wall that is well connected uh, to the corium. Um, this horse, her, the theme with her is that her toes like to get long. So on the first couple, I rasped before I found that extra length in the toe. And for the second two hooves, I found it before rasping. So I've, I've done kind of a vertical nip with my nippers to remove that excess material. So now that I've done that, I'm going to start rasping and start creating my bevel and balancing this hoof. And one of the things that's important to know is that when we're trimming for barefoot, we're not trimming the hoof flat. Uh, a lot of farriers have to trim the hoof flat in preparation to put a shoe on afterward. But when a horse is barefoot, it's really important to take down the quarters usually a little bit lower than the rest of the hoof wall. You know, if the sole plane dictates that that's what you should do, if there's an, an actual dip there. Um, so I just follow the plane of the sole when I'm taking the wall down. And usually that means floating that area of the wall in the quarters a little bit. So the hoof does not end up being flat uh, when you're done trimming it. It's a very dynamic structure. And if you left those quarters flat, when the horse loads that foot and it expands, those quarters are going to hit the ground first. And those are usually the thinnest and weakest area of the hoof wall. So that's something you really make sure you want to address so that it doesn't happen. So now I've got this left front pulled forward on the stand and I'm basically only going to finish my bevel from the top. This is a beautiful hoof. There's not much distortion in any that there was. I addressed from the bottom of the hoof. So yeah, just creating that roll, smoothing those edges, and then I'll be done with this horse. So she stood great, wonderful mare, sweet mare in this breeder. All her horses are great. Um, but yeah, beautiful hoof. If you have any comments or questions, uh, please feel free to leave them down below and I'll try to answer them to the best of my ability.